Want to know more about how to build, launch, and grow a profitable online fitness business? Book a call with our team today. We will help you create a plan and give you strategies that you can implement ASAP so you can start making money and impacting lives now. Welcome to Coach Line's Summer Mastermind. We are on episode number 12, Make Sales by Understanding Your Ideal Client. So in today's episode, we are going to dig deep into who your ideal client is, what do they look like, what do they sound like, what do they smell like, who are they, what color is their hair, what are, what's their job description, all of the details surrounding your ideal client. We are going to dive into that. And some people want to skip over this all the time, like, but honestly, it's one of the most important parts of your business. If you do not know who your ideal client is, then it's going to be very difficult for you to make sales and more importantly get them results if you don't know who your ideal client is you're going to just be targeting anyone and everyone um, and you're not going to be able to laser focus into one person or one type of person in order to be able to serve them most effectively when you know who your ideal client is you can serve them better than anyone else can because you have specific um plans for them, you have specific um, exercises that you give them, you have specific services that you're offering. It's all catered to that one specific type of person. And so today we're really going to focus on that. I encourage you not to skip this episode because as simple as it might seem, there's going to be things that you're going to learn that you probably wouldn't have thought about and that you're probably not incorporating into your business. And it could literally be that one little thing that can stop you from getting a sale. So be sure you watch this and like yesterday's episode, this is going to be an excerpt from my Flex Online Academy. That's my paid um, program um, and so I'm just taking an excerpt out of that. Um, again, this is in the foundational exercises or the foundational lessons in the program. Um, so this is not getting into the deep um, deep skills and things that you'll learn um, if you do join um, the academy later on. This is again just scratching the surface, getting the foundation set because once you have a solid foundation then you can go and do all that automation and ads and all that other great stuff that people learn in the Flex Online Academy. So if you're interested in learning more about the academy be sure to schedule a breakthrough call with me and we can discuss all of that and how to get your business to the next level but for today um, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into kind of the things that people are learning inside the academy um, at the foundational level. Um, and so if you've already done this for your business, awesome for you. Still watch it just in case you find something new. Um, and if you have any tips that you want to share, be sure to toss those in the Facebook group as well. So as I mentioned yesterday, same applies today. Anytime I mention anything in particular um, that's pertaining to the academy you can disregard that as it's not going to be applicable to this mastermind episode again this is just taking a lesson out of the academy um, for y'all to check it out and then you're also going to need the downloadable worksheet um, so I'll link it in the description below so be sure to download that so you can complete the exercises and, and fill in the information for your avatar so I'm gonna um, let you watch this video I'll be back at the end so be sure to um, um, come back and see me and we were going to have a quick discussion on what your homework is going to be and what next steps are going to look like. So tune in to this so you can um, find your ideal client. So check this out. Welcome to unit two, lesson three, understand your ideal client. All right, that sounded a lot better in my head. Um, but so you can get noticed as an authority and get paid what you are worth. As always, remember to make a copy of this so you can edit it, enter in your date for this week, and let's get into the tools and exercises. So for lesson number three, um, we're just going to need this Google Doc, uh, what we're in right now, and audience insights, which is a way to find out information about your audience, which we will get into a bit later. Um, the whole purpose of this um, lesson is to really find out who your target audience is, who you're going to be serving. Um, so the lessons are centered around finding that out. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six lessons, and we have a benchmark. We're starting off strong with the benchmark in the first exercise. So we're going to go through defining your ideal client, uh, 
looking into what sources of information they um, engage with, the goal, their goals, their challenges, the specifics, and other interests, and then we'll wrap it up with the benchmark. So for this lesson, you are going to want to listen to the video and then complete all of the exercises after the video. So feel free to take notes in the notes section. Um, but before we get into the actual exercise, it's story time. All right, so benefits of knowing your ideal avatar. So y'all know I love to tell stories, so here goes one. So imagine if your favorite food in the whole entire world was fettuccine alfredo pasta. And you know that every time you go home to visit your mom, she's going to have you a hot, sizzling hot plate of fettuccine alfredo waiting for you as soon as you walk in the door. You are so excited to go home because you know this is always going to be the case. So you gobble it down and you are completely satisfied. So what do you do? You keep coming back for more. You start visiting every weekend just so you can get that plate of fettuccine. This is probably super relevant when you're in college and you broke and you ain't got no money, right? So your aunt calls you up and says she wants to invite you over for dinner. Um, she hasn't seen you in a while, so she's like, hey, yo, come over. So you skip going to your mom's house because your aunt also said that she was going to make dinner. So she, you come to her house and she has a huge plate of shrimp fettuccine alfredo. You get excited at first, but then when you get a little closer look, you notice that there's shrimp in it. Um, come to find out you are allergic to shrimp. So in your aunt's mind, she thinks she's serving you the best thing possible because she heard that you liked fettuccine alfredo but she failed to recognize that you're allergic to shrimp this is super important because you might think that you know who you're serving or who your ideal client is but until you get down to the nitty-gritty details you could be serving them the wrong thing and they could be allergic <laughs> although they won't probably be allergic but they might not be accustomed to your teaching style or what you're offering or they might not even need that kind of help um so what ends up happening her nephew loses interest in coming over um he doesn't come back over he just goes back to what he knows he goes back to his mom who he knows can serve him exactly what he, what he wants and what he needs um and is not going to make him hungry because he wasn't able to eat so that's a far stretch in saying you want to be like the mom in your business. You want to be like the mom. You want to know your clients or your children, if you will, inside and out. You want to know what their interests are, what they like, what's going to make them happy. And by getting down to the details of who they are, you'll be able to figure that out. So let's be a mom in the business and not the aunt who thinks they know um, who who their client is. OK, so before we get into um, completing the exercises, um, we must first understand the benefits because you're probably like scrolling down right now like, oh my gosh, Shawnee, do I actually have to fill this out? Like, this is so basic. I have to know about my avatar. I'm telling you right now, you are going to thank yourself later for filling this out. Um, it's it's one of the most important pieces to build in your business because if you're serving them the wrong information, the wrong content, then you're not going to get any sales. So you really need to know who you're serving if you want to be able to get them to come back um, and stay committed just like the mom with that fettuccine Alfredo. All right, so let's dig into some of the benefits. So benefits of defining your ideal avatar. So the whole reason why you're going to be completing the exercises today is for one, you will begin to view your prospects as a real as real people, not faceless demographic compilations. So what this means is your avatar is going to have a name. You're going to start defining them as such. So let's just say my ideal avatar is Tiffany. Every time I talk about who I'm serving, I'm addressing Tiffany. So now it becomes a real person and someone easier to serve because it's not just some random person person that you're like oh I'm targeting fitness coaches no I'm targeting Tiffany and obviously I have multiple avatars but for today we're just going to focus on one so you're going to make them a real person um, and you're going to talk about them as if they're a real person you're going to use their name two 
you'll be able to narrow down your target market, which allows you to target them much more effectively. So if you know the minute details, like you know exactly which sauce that they want for their fettuccine Alfredo, aka maybe you know exactly what movements are going to work best with their body type, you know exactly what foods are going to work best to reach their goals, then you're able to target them. You know what their pain points are. You're able to target them a lot deeper. Um, and this is actually going to save you money when we get into the ads portion and the accelerator and takeover programs. You will be able to save money because you're not just targeting a blanket um targeting a whole bunch of people you're going to be laser targeting at your marketing efforts um, which will ultimately save you money in the end three you'll narrow down their pain points enabling to enabling you to address them much more specifically so if you know specifically that the people that you're working with have a lower back issue is like they're one of a pain point that they have and that's what's preventing them from losing weight you can create marketing um marketing materials and things to cater to that specific um pain point that they're struggling with um and it's going to appeal to them more because they're going to be like whoa how did they know are they reading my mind i have to go check this out because it's so relevant and relatable to me the fourth thing is you have a consistent perspective from which to build your brand and make important decisions. So this is really great when it comes time to figuring out something. Um, you can make a decision easy. Um, if you know that your client doesn't like the color red and you're trying to build an ad, and it's a it's a decision between making a blue ad and a red ad you know your ideal closet doesn't like red so you're gonna make that blue ad and it's gonna um, get their attention right so um, that's just a minor decision you'd have to make but even bigger decisions that you need to make for your company as far as marketing and advertising and just building the business you'll be able to make better decisions because you'll have a compass and so if something doesn't align with your ideal avatar, you know to move the opposite direction. So again, it's kind of like that North Star thing, something that you follow and, and never sway from. Five, this allows you to say no, yes, no. You can say no to bad customers because not every customer is the right customer. This is super important for us as coaches um, because a lot of times we, are sh we, we just want to get as many clients as we can um, just to make ends meet. Um, you've been slaving in the gym and you just, want that, you just want that next client. You just want that next client. So you just say yes to everybody. But here's the thing in the benefits of being online is that you can, your value your value and your value is a lot higher online so yes you can say no to bad customers because at the end of the day you're doing them a disservice by saying yes when you know in the back of your mind that they're not probably a good customer because they're not going to get the results and your business is going to be centered around getting your clients results and changing their lives so yes it's actually better to say no to someone who doesn't fit your ideal profile versus just saying yes because again everyone is not the right customer so when you know who your customer is, you can easily say yes or no. Six, you will have higher retention rates because you are appealing to them um, and you're solving all of their needs. You're reading their mind. You know exactly what they need. They're going to stay around longer. It's just like the 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 the. Um, child and the mother the child is going to keep coming back for that fettuccine alfredo because it meets their needs and they know exact and, and the mom knows exactly how you like it um so you're going to keep coming back same with your business if you know exactly what they need you know exactly what they like they're going to keep coming back for more um, number seven, you're going to get better tailored customer support. Um, so if you know exactly someone's pain point, your your team can better assess it and better uh, solve it for them. There's not going to be a whole bunch of running around trying to figure out, oh, such and such asked this question. How do we answer it? No, you're, you're going to know what the typical questions are that you're going to get. It's going to make your business move along s smoother. It's going to this is going to retain your clients longer because they know that they're going to have that support system to go to. They can um, and get um, solutions to their problems that are custom tailored to what they're going through. Um, and then lastly, which is a big, big, big one, the more you can figure out in your avatar, the better you can empathize. Empathize is the key word here. You can empathize with them and will understand why your ideal client wants your product or service, how to reach them, 
how to make them happy and how to get them to buy. So if you can tap into your av- ideal avatar's language, their mind, what they're, what they're thinking, what they need, their thoughts, you will be able to get them to buy and you can make a bigger impact on their lives because you'll know exactly what they need. So these are all the benefits of defining your ideal avatar and why this exercise that we're going to do today is so important. So do not fly through this and say, oh, I've already done this before. No, you're starting you're starting over um, and we are going to do this together and we really want to get down to the details. So get specific as possible because the more specific you are, the more sales you'll be able to get. So let's dive into this um, Again, you'll want to just watch the video and then complete it after, but I'm just going to run through each of the exercises for you so you know what to do. So um, I always like to start with a little quote at the type, but in order to make sales, you must embody your ideal client. So if you don't know your client, you have no business selling to them. That is so true. If you don't know who you're selling to, most likely you're not going to be able to make a sale to them. So you might as well not be selling in the first place. You're going to be losing money. You're going to be losing time. You're going to be losing energy. And you're going to be trying to pull yourself hair out wondering why you can't make any sales. Maybe that's where you are now, but I'm telling you, when you dig into your avatar's mind, which is you're going to do in these exercises, you, it's going to be so easy to sell to them because they're going to be like, oh wow, like I have to get this, they know exactly what I need, okay? So in exercise one, you're gonna be defining your ideal client. So as you're going through this, you, like I said up here, you want to embody your ideal client. So when you're completing these exercises, complete them as if you were your ideal client. So you're not you completing this, you are your ideal avatar, ideal client, and if we're not familiar with the word avatar, it's essentially the same thing as client or person, ideal, your ideal customer is your ideal avatar, okay? And so you're gonna fill in the information below as if you were your ideal client. You actually even wanna replace this with an image. Um, You can double tap it in image options and add an image in here. Actually, I didn't mean to press image options. I meant to uh, press replace image. And you wanna upload from your computer. So go on the web, Find someone because you want to know what color hair they have. You want to know what color ethnicity they are. Not what color, what ethnicity they are. You want to know exactly what they look like. This could be just someone you find on online or if you actually have a client already who's your ID avatar, take a, uh, plug their picture into there. You want to get specific, you guys. Um, fill in all of this information. Again, we are at a benchmark, so anything in yellow is what you're going to want to share in the benchmark room. Um, similar people could be other clients that you have, other people um, that you've encountered, um, some of your followers. So you just want to get similar people to your avatar so you know kind of what track you're on for who you're targeting. Um, but this person is completely made up or based off of someone real. Um, but most importantly is you want to give them a name. You want to give them a name because you want to start to refer to this person as such and such um, throughout your business. Um, and so it's it's really important that you give a name because when you bring other people onto your team that you're going to do when you reach the alumni program, you are going to... Um, your team is all gonna rally around this person. So when you're talking to your team and when you're onboarding your team, you're gonna be like, yes, Tiffany is our girl. Uh, She likes this, she reads this, she eats this. And so everyone knows whom we're targeting. So it'll make marketing efforts so much easier. And exercise two, where does your avatar get their info? So you're going to map out the sources of information. So you're just going to fill in the information below as if you're ideal avatar. So what books and magazines do they read? What music do they like? And so forth. Um, These little asterisks right here, I made a little note down here. Be sure to, um, so there's going to be blogs, websites, social pages like Facebook pages that they may be a part of, conferences that they go to, events that they attend. Be sure to join these groups and try to attend these conferences if they're happening right now. Join the Facebook groups that they're in. Um, uh, subscribe to the blogs that they visit. Um, check out the websites that they go to. Um, join these groups now and start to engage by posting helpful information, commenting and liking prospective client posts. So let's say for platforms if your target demographic is 80 years old they're most likely not going to be on instagram so you're going to want to find a better way to communicate with them but say they are 25 years old um college student they're probably going to be on instagram so you're going to want to put instagram in this platform section and what you're going to do is go on instagram 
find these prospective clients and start to engage with them. So start commenting on their posts, start liking their stuff, um, and be sure you're keeping a list of the people you're engaging so you can find them later. Um, so at the last, um, in unit six of Genesis, we are actually going to be engaging um, potential prospects. So right now you wanna build rapport with them. You wanna build, um, you want to build a relationship with them. This is not meant to sell. So do not try to sell to them yet. Do not try to sell to them yet because you need to learn the proper way to sell. So right now, it's literally just engaging with them, liking their stuff, commenting on their stuff, and most importantly, providing them with helpful information, feedback, and advice. Um, so join those Facebook groups, join those blogs, attend those conferences, um, get on the platforms that there are and find them and start to engage with them. So again, we'll come back to this later in unit six, but you have to start the engagement now because you don't want to just try to sell to someone um, cold, right? So once you start to engage with them, when we get to unit six, they won't be cold audience anymore. They'll be warm audience. So find out where they are, engage with them, and give them helpful information, um, tips and tricks and stuff like that. Um, and exercise three, what are your avatar's goals and challenges? So fill in the information below as if your ideal avatar. So just go through this after the video and fill in all of the information. Again, specific, specific, specifics are super, super important. You want to get down to literally as, as, as fine-tuned as you can. Um, and input the dream solution. So if there was a dream product or service list, yours um, or something else what would it what would entail okay so think about what your um, ideal avatars dream solution would look like Num exercise four the specifics so yes we got into the specifics of everything up above but this is just getting to the nitty-gritty details of your avatar you want to know what their guilty pleasures are you want to know what their favorite foods are so you can work around them in your program okay so um fill out the specifics and then um, even vocabulary. You want to know common phrases because when you're writing your ads or your organic content posts, um, you want to be using the same language that they use so they feel like you're their friend, right? Um, and eventually you will be. Um, so number five, the last exercise in this lesson, lay out any other important interests your avatar has. So maybe I didn't include something um, in exercises one through four and you just know that they have other interests. This is just a free for all brain dump for you to write anything else that you know about your avatar. Um, and again, um, this is just an open platform for you to put in that information. But there's also what we call audience insights, which is part of the Facebook um, platform that allows you to see what um, people are interested in, what Facebook pages they like, uh, where they're located, specific demographics. We are not gonna get into full details about this until we get into advertising and the takeover program. Um, but I'm going to just show you it. So if you want to just take a look around, don't get boggled down on this and try to figure out exactly how to use it because we'll address this later. But just in case you want to, when you click that link, it's going to take you to Audience Insights and you're just going to press go to Audience Insights um, and it'll take you to a page that looks like this once my internet is going slow. So we just want to check out what everyone on Facebook is, is doing, right? So let's just say our interest is in fitness um, and wellness, okay? And this is just one example. You can put your niche or whatever in there and find um, more detailed results. So as you can see on the right-hand side, things start to change. So as you can see, uh, women are based on this data. This is real data from Facebook, so it's not made up. Um, more women than men are um, interested in this topic. Um, most of them are married, um, have college degrees. You can see the kind of what their job titles are. So you can use some of this information to help you define your ideal avatar, but I would encourage you to first attempt it on your own before getting into this audience insights because this can be kind of advanced, but I just wanted to show it to you in case you want to do some more research on it. Um, you can see what pages they're liking. So this is information that you can put into the other interest category. So people who are interested in fitness and wellness, they shop at Ikea, they love Planet Fitness, 
Um, they love Betty Crocker, uh, Pillsbury, and Oreo. So these are more interest of theirs. But again, you're going to want to get more specific. I'm in general fitness and wellness. Remember, that is just the um, market, but you want to get into your submarket. So you can type in your submarket or your niche here. Um, you can see what pages, what other pages they like, how relevant it is. You can see where they're typically located. Um, most of them are in LA, of course, because all the skinny bitches are, no, I'm just kidding. Um, and then that's where I used to live and everyone was in shape. Um, you can see other activity, like what they've done, what they, um, how, what they've done in the last 30 days, like. Are they clicking on ads, liking posts, what devices they're on? But the most thing that's gonna probably be relevant to you right now is page likes and demographics. And if you just press see all, you can see everything. So they like Olive Garden um, events that they do is the color run. So maybe that's a good place to start. Maybe you need to go to a color run and meet some people um, who could be potential clients. So it's just a great way to find out more information. They like the show This Is Us. So maybe you want to check it out and maybe include some of that language when you're conversing with them so you can sound like you know them. Obviously, don't be fake. If you don't like the show This Is Us, even though it's bomb.com, then don't watch it. But just giving you some ideas of ways that you could interact with your audience um, and find out other things that they like. So again, like I said, do not get too hung up on this. You can play around with it, but we'll go through a full detailed um, for how to use this in later um, later in the academy. So we will top it off with our benchmark. Um, for this benchmark, you just want to share your avatar's name, age, gender, and occupation in the benchmarks topic room. And as always, you can just click here and it will take you there. So that is everything for unit two, lesson three, understand your ideal client. Please, please, please take time to fill this in. It's super important. And again, you will pat yourself on the back later on your marketing and make, when you make your organic content and your um, paid content, it's going to be so much easier once you know who you're serving um, those, those content to. Um, and remember, let's be the mom, not the aunt. We, 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 we want the mom. We want to be like your mom. We want to know your, we want to know you inside and out. Um, and so be sure you are a mom and being a good parent. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so as always, stay flexing on them and I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that excerpt from the Flex Online Academy, um, Finding Your Ideal Client. Um, please take those um, exercises and um, complete all of the steps to figure out who your ideal client is. Um, you want to start out with one ideal client, um, but you can obviously have more than one. And sometimes I call them avatars, so your ideal avatar. So you want to make sure you have one main avatar um, and then branch out and create others as you go. But again, your marketing, your advertising, um, your message everything should be focused around who your ideal client is so don't put anything out there that's not gonna appeal to your ideal client or again you're gonna have a lot of time hard, you're gonna have a hard time getting those conversions and those sales so for today's homework I want you guys to um, put in the Facebook group your ideal avatar name age um, occupation and any other details that you want to let us know about your ideal avatar but at least put those three things we want to know what your um, ideal avatar name is their age and what their occupation is and actually let's put in there what are their goals that they're trying to accomplish so put at least those four things um, we want to know who your ideal avatar is maybe we know someone who is your ideal avatar um, and we can shoot them over your way so um, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Um, when we win, it's better when we win together. So we want everyone to get this amazing info. And we are going to be heading into episode 13 tomorrow. So we are halfway there. Actually, we're over halfway there. So this has been so much fun. I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Be sure to train, love, and grow. See you next time.